The Minnesota Vikings are still undefeated through five weeks of the NFL season. They pulled out another nail biter, this time across the pond and against a, a familiar foe. Minnesota took on Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets in London yesterday morning. The Vikings didn't seem bothered by the early start as they got out to a 17 to nothing lead. The offense, defense, and special team all scored significant points in this one. The Jets would make it close, though, as Rodgers threw for two touchdowns despite struggling with three turnovers as well. In the end, the Vikings win 23 to 17. So their next game will be at home on October 20th against the Detroit Lions. Kickoff is set for noon. But before that match happens, we want to talk about the stellar season so far and who better to do that with than our very own Vikings insider, Cody Benjamin. Hey, Cody, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me back. I mean, the only time we're going to be talking about the Vikings not winning a game is after the bye week because oh they have gosh. no one to play. So yeah. it's been, yeah, it's been a fun season so it's far. It's been so fun. And we literally have not, had not really had anything bad to say so far. I mean, it, it, it is a little nerve wracking, though, how close the last couple of games have been. Should Vikings fans be more encouraged or, or concerned that the teams had two close straight wins? Yeah, I mean, I think this is honestly like the best case scenario uh, for the Vikings where you're stacking the wins. They're 5-0, and oh, and so uh, in the standings, it's it's spotless. I mean, they, they've got a perfect record, but you've got enough on tape. Uh, you've got two back-to-back you know, back -back games where the other team has pulled close where you can go into the bye week and you have things to point at. You have things to correct. And so I think that's actually a good place to be where – you're not just going to rest on your laurels coming out of the bye week. You you do have things to clean up. Um, it was a sloppy game for for Aaron Rodgers and Sam Darnold, and so I think for the Vikings to still pull that out on a on a day where the Jets defense did enough to win that game. Um, yeah, you're you're sitting pretty. I think at five and zero. Oh, obviously, you have a lead in the NFC North, but you you've got things to to, to worry about. I mean, you've got to get the run game going again. That you know we're going to be monitoring Aaron Jones's health. Um, Sam Darnold looked a lot more human than he has all season against the Jets, which is to be expected against that kind of a defense. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're in a good spot here where you can rest up, kind of take stock of, of all that you've done well and all that you need to, to correct after five weeks. Yes, let's talk about Aaron Jones. How much does his injury affect the team right now? Well, I think you could see right away in London that uh, it, it did affect them. It did affect Sam Darnold. Um, obviously, the Jets are a great defense as it is, but when he doesn't have that ground game to lean on, I mean, that that was going to be a game where Aaron Jones was going to be key. And so for him to exit with the hip injury, I don't know if that directly uh, results in Sam Darnold, his accuracy kind of getting a little more scattershot. But certainly when you don't have that support in the backfield, and, and Aaron Jones has been a huge upgrade for them in the backfield this year. So if he's not healthy coming out of the bye, and I, I would expect, you know, Kevin O'Connell, he, he didn't seem to indicate major concern about it. But if he's not available coming out of the bye, that's a position where I'd look for the Vikings to maybe sniff around the trade market. They did that before. They brought in Cam Akers before the, their – they're, they prioritize depth there uh, under Kevin O'Connell. And so if you just have Ty Chandler, I think they'd be uh, kind of looking around to see what other emergency depth they could bring in. So moving forward, what should, what should we expect from the Vikings? It's been good so far, but uh, how does it look moving forward? Well, yeah, well, again, it's 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 a good time for the bye week. Uh, you've had two two games where you've had the Jets and the Packers kind of threaten to derail the win streak. Um, so you can take stock of that. I, I mean, I think, again, we've been saying this all year about Sam Darnold, about the Vikings. With each passing week, it's harder not to take them seriously. And so at 5-0, and uh, these aren't pushover games coming up. Obviously, the Lions coming out of the bye, that's going to be a tough game. Then you go to L.A. to play the Rams. The Rams are beat up, but if they've got Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua back, that's not a gimme game. If you get past those two games, though, I mean, there's there's some winnable games. I mean, the Vikings, this was, this was the hard stretch of the schedule, going up against San Francisco, against Houston, overseas to play the Jets. The fact that you're 5-0, and I, I think that, 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 that bodes very well for the stretch run for the Vikings because if you get to 
let's say seven and two, eight and two, you know, that kind of a record, you're already in, uh, you know, the playoff conversation. It's just a matter of how are you seeding it by the end. I know we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but I mean, at five and oh, it's hard not, again, to take them seriously. And so we'll see how they, how healthy they are coming out of the bye. Yes, that, that, that's a good thing they should prioritize during this bye week for sure is their health and their strength. But what other things do you think they should focus on during this time? Yeah, I mean, you, you want to get Sam Darnold back to a place where he's comfortable. I mean, I'm not worried really at all about Brian Flores' defense. We saw a little bit against the Packers. You know, Jordan Love was was really, I mean, he was being, you know, borderline reckless throwing the ball downfield, but he still hit some big plays against them. The Vikings give up actually a decent amount through the air. They've just been so good at preventing points in the red zone, you know, on critical downs coming up big. And so I'm, I'm really not that concerned with the Vikings defense. If there's one area after the Jets game that you're maybe scratching your head a little bit saying, hmm, you know, I wonder, is Sam Darnold MVP caliber? And he's got the supporting cast, you know, again, uh, you know, if TJ Hawkinson, you know, joins the lineup, that's another safety valve for him. But I think it's his performance against the Jets was a chance for Vance to kind of take a step back and say, let's pump the brakes a little bit on the MVP talk and hope that that the run game can continue to support him after the bye. Hey, Cody, thank you so much for joining us. Anything else you wanted to add this morning? I mean, I've been saying it every single week, but I mean, <laughs> you don't want to get ahead of yourself. You're not punching tickets to the Super Bowl yet, but I right. think you can feel again pretty comfortable as, as a Vikings fan. I wouldn't be overly concerned that Sam Darnold looked, again, vulnerable against the Jets. That's a great defense. You know, you're going overseas. Some weird things happen in these international games. I think still, if you're a Vikings fan, you're exceeding expectations. Aaron Jones' injury doesn't seem to be serious. You're getting 